When it comes to hit movies, bigger is better, and nothing is bigger than IMAX. The IMAX company has grown into a $1.7 billion empire with more than 700 specialized theaters around the world and plans to keep growing. Everything in an IMAX theater is designed to intensify the way you experience a movie. There are laser-aligned speakers that customize the surround sound for every seat in the audience. And a specialized screen that wraps around 20% more of the theater than a regular one. The latest Captain America earned a record-breaking $92 million in its first weekend. I'm right. Part of the reason for Captain America's success was IMAX 3D. To see it on the bigger screen with the glasses, moviegoers paid about three times more. IMAX theaters first gained popularity back in the 70s, when specialty venues like museums and science centers started showing nature documentaries. But with the advancement of IMAX cameras, Hollywood directors came running, eager for the chance to show more of the action on the extended IMAX screen. Over the course of 40 years, IMAX has transformed from documentaries about space to movies with Hollywood stars. Nearly 400 IMAX theaters have been built since 2008 with a growing market in China. Joining us now is IMAX CEO Richard Gelfond. Richard, good morning. Good morning. So why is there a desire to see American movies in China? Well, it's not just American movies, it's movies in general. And the reason is the increased economic uh, buying power of the middle class. So in China, if you went back 10 years ago, people were struggling to pay the rent or to buy food or to buy clothing. And now they have extra disposable income and they have more time on their hands. So there hasn't been this huge entertainment infrastructure built like there's no analogy really to uh, Broadway theater. There aren't big sports leagues. So there's a great appetite for films. And IMAX is such a novel way, immersive way, sort of 21st century way that it really attracts a lot of Chinese people to the movies. You have 170 theaters in China already. You're going to open another 230 more? At, at least. That's what we have under contract right now. Um, what's going on there is the number of screens is growing at this incredible pace. And I think China will probably pass the U.S. in number of screens by around 2020. And be your biggest market? Oh, it will be our biggest market at that point. It seems like in the United States, we keep hearing that fewer and fewer people are going to the movie theaters. Are you guys trying to increase attendance stateside or now are you just looking really at this overseas market? No, the U.S. is a growth market for us. And 13 was a growth year over 12. It, it's really a matter of the product. So if you look at, you know, the summer season coming up right now with um, things like Godzilla and Spider-Man and Transformers, you know, I think this will be a very good um, summer season. So I think it goes up and down. The problem in the U.S. is actually one of the opportunities for IMAX, which is bigger screens in the house, um, gaming, spending time on your computers. So you have to really offer the consumer something compelling to get off the couch and go to the movies. And I think that's part of what gives IMAX its momentum. So is, I mean, if you make an action film now, do you have to have an IMAX component to it? Um, that's a great um, question. And I think a lot of the directors think so. So if it's no coincidence that when you look at the list of directors who work in IMAX, it's people like Chris Nolan, it's James Cameron, it's Michael Bay. So I think people who are doing the big action kind of visual spectacles are kind of saying, I want it in IMAX. And that's also been a key component to our growth. 3D has been enormously popular overseas, but less so here. Why is that? Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure why it is. Um, um, differs so much by country, but I suspect it has something to do with heritage. And I think in the U.S. in particular, films have been around for so long and people got used to seeing them in 2D that I think they go to 3D only if it's something really special. So an avatar or gravity or something that makes takes great advantage of, of the medium. But I think in developing countries in particular, like Russia and China, Korea, or you look at South America, you know, they don't have the way they're used to seeing the movie. And I think seeing it in 3D is a way they become more used to. In fact, they want it in 3D, don't they? Yeah, they do. And, and in China, for example, some movies are specifically changed into 3D 
um, after production so that they can see them in China in 3D. And, you know, we'll see where that goes in the long term. But there's been some limited success with that so far. I want to ask you about the deal you guys just finalized with Disney about the Avengers and the next Star Wars. I mean, those are names everyone can associate with. Do you feel like that will really help build IMAX? Um, well, we've done a lot of the movies that we've wanted over the last several years. So we did almost all the Harry Potter movies. We've been involved in the Batman trilogy, Spider-Man. Um, we did the last Avengers. But we did them more as a one-off basis. And what we did with Disney here is we conceived of it as a longer-term deal. We've had arrangements like this with Warner Brothers for a number of years, and it's worked very well over that series of movies. We have one right now with Paramount, so I think it will be beneficial. Richard Gelfand, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much. Up next.